Hello, and welcome to Kaleidoscope Enrichment. Uh, my name is Sandy Roberts, and I'm a Makerspace Coordinator and STEM Educator here in New Jersey. Um, today, I thought we would do a really simple introduction to uh, 3D printing design to computer-aided design using Tinkercad, which is a free website for uh, designing 3D printed items. Um, today, we're going to be making a button mostly because right now I have a lot of uh, folks that are out there making PPE, protective gear for those in uh, health industries. And one thing that they tend to need a lot of are buttons for ear savers and uh, you know various other items. And the buttons are getting kind of tough to get a hand on um, just because a lot of craft stores are closed. So I've had a lot of requests for buttons, uh, 3D printed buttons. So I thought it this is a perfect item to design in Tinkercad because it's fairly simple. It uses a lot of the basic features um, and it's a useful thing that you may yourself need. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go to Tinkercad.com. Okay. As I said, this is a free website. You're going to need to go ahead and make yourself an account if you don't already have one. Kids, your parents will need to approve that. Uh, it's not hard to do. It doesn't take too long. But um, you will need to actually make yourself a free account. Once you do, you're going to click on the little Tinkercon, Tinkercad uh, icon, and it's going to bring you to your designs. And you may not have anything, and that's okay. We're just going to come into kind of pre-set up something for design a button. Okay, so this is your basic Tinkercad uh, work plane. This is if you can imagine kind of the bed of the 3D printer, everything needs to be built on this work plane. Um, the work plane is automatically set. If you look down here, okay, it's automatically set to be in millimeters in the metric system. Um, I'll be working in millimeters today because it's, it's pretty standard for computer aided design. Um, if you prefer to switch to inches, you absolutely can do that. <coughs> and if that helps you, that's, that's great. Um, like I said, I'm going to continue working in millimeters. It's what I'm I'm used to, and uh, it's what's generally used for CAD. But I'll I'll talk you through some of the conversions there, so it's not too hard. Um, over here on the side, you can see that you have some basic shapes, and you have all your your most important shapes like boxes and cylinders, spheres, cones, and the idea is that you can take these basic shapes, combine them in different ways, and create more unique shapes that you want or need. Um, so that makes it really easy and really quick. These two that are grayed out, they're what we call holes. So if I want to take away from a shape, take part of a shape out, I can use these two to do that. Any shape can actually be made into a hole, uh, but they have these two there just because they're the most common. The ruler uh, is used if you need to uh, measure something on the work plane. And then we have a couple of other important uh, items that you need to know. So your import and export are for importing STL files, which are uh, 3D printable files. And eventually we're going to use export to take our file and make it into something that we can print. Over here we have our, um, this is copy, okay, and paste. This duplicates the item that you currently have selected. And this is really useful if you need to make a lot of something. And this is our trash can to get rid of something if we don't like a design or we don't like a piece or we don't need it. And this is our undo button, our redo button. This is a group button. And what that means is when you take two pieces, two different um, items, and group them, they become one piece. And this is kind of like merging things together. And you need to group everything before you're uh, done with your design and export it. If you want to ungroup things to change them, though, you can do that. We'll be using these align features here, um, which allow you to kind of center everything and make sure everything is perfectly aligned just the way you want it. And then we've got our mirror tool, which lets you basically flip items if needed. We won't be using this too much today. This right here, this block, lets you move your view so that you can see your item from everywhere. And the home lets you go back to that original view whenever you want to. This is for full screen, okay, or 
where um, if I had something on here, it would fit that in your view. Um, this allows you to zoom in, zoom out, okay? And this one, basically, if you don't want that kind of uh, perspective view, and you just want to look kind of, so it's really just a preference. Mostly I work in, in perspective view. Down here, snap grid means that it will automatically snap to the lines on this grid. So you can kind of see, since again, this is metric, it's separated uh, with 10 small squares within a larger square. Um, and that means that this is going to snap to one millimeter. Now I can set that all the way down to 0.1 millimeter. So I can get a uh, very, very um, precise movement, or I can just turn it off if it's annoying me. I'm just going to leave it to one millimeter for now. I may adjust that if I need to. Um, all right. And we are just going to home this out and get started. Up here, if you click, you can change the name of your file. It'll randomly assign two silly words as your um, name so that you don't accidentally create files that are uh, named the same. It does auto save your work so you don't have to worry that it's going to disappear on you. Um, so that's a really nice feature, but you may want to rename this right now to button or something like that just so that you know what it is. Okay, to get started, we need a cylinder. Okay, most buttons are cylinders. Now, you're going to want to have an idea of what kind of button you want for this. I'm going to be designing um, a button that was requested. It's going to be about an inch or 25 millimeters in diameter. Okay, so across the center of the circle. Um, and uh, it's going to be your standard like two millimeter thickness, which is pretty normal for a button. And the holes are going to be a little bit larger for like a yarn or tapestry thread. So you're going to kind of need to analyze the button you may want to create. You need to know what it is that you want to make. Um, a typical shirt button, for example, will be much smaller than this and have smaller holes. Um, but this is kind of an, an easy design to make. So I've brought in my cylinder. I'm going to just zoom. Okay. When we have a shape on our work plane, a couple things we need to know. If I click on these little white boxes, they will allow me to adjust, okay, the um, length and width of my item. As I said, I want something roughly one inch or 25 millimeters. I can actually click on that white box and type in exactly how many millimeters I want. Okay, so I've got my um, measurement now. I'm just going to move this up so you can see. Um, so I've got 25 by 25, and I can close this and get this out of my way if it's bothering me. So that's 25 by 25 milliliters. Great, millimeters. <laughs> um, and I the same goes for up on top. This square, okay, adjusts the height of my item. As I mentioned before, I'm just going to set it to two millimeters. That gives me a decent thickness of my button, but doesn't take a really long time to print. Okay. A couple of other things to know as you have shapes on your work plane. This little cone actually lifts your item off the work plane. Okay. This can be really confusing. Um, sometimes people will lift items off the work plane when they don't mean to, and then it's very hard to get things to group. If that is done when you um, save your item, or export your item, uh, that could be a real problem, okay? So if you're ever unsure, you can see how I, I dropped it below the work plane, and you can kind of see it's below that work plane. That'd be like printing in negative space, and we don't want that. So again, this little number over here tells me how far below the work plane I am. I just set that to zero, and boom, I'm back where I need to be, okay? You may also notice that there are these little arrows. They allow you to rotate your item if needed. Again, you can click in those boxes. Uh, so one, so they each rotate on the different planes. So you kind of have to get used to which is which. We're not really going to be messing with that today, but I want to make you aware if you accidentally click on it, you could just use your undo button to get everything back to where it needs to be. Okay, so we've got our basic button shape. Oh, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. You can also use the rolling wheel on your mouse if you have one to uh, zoom in or out. 
Okay, so there's my button. This is a very simple button. I will show you how to add a little bit of a bevel or a curve to it later. But for now, I just want to show you how to use this whole function to put the holes into our button. So I've got another cylinder I'm bringing over. Now, I want this hole to be a three millimeter, which is roughly an eighth of an inch. Um, and I'm just kind of sizing it. And again, I can go ahead and type in my numbers to make that a little bit easier. Now I've got a hole that is three millimeters. For this, I need to decide if I want a two hole or a four hole button. Um, it's preference, four hole tends not to twist as much, two hole is a little quicker and easier to sew. Um, I'm going to use a four hole button today. So I'm going to just put this on, just kind of drag it towards the center and I'm gonna use that duplicate Okay, and now I've got two. I'm going to select all my items. I'm going to come to that align that I mentioned before. See this one on the, on the floor? That is aligning all of these items so that they're center across that, that line there. And you can see with the align, it also shows me with a dotted line where the center is on my button. So I can kind of eyeball and see that my um, holes are just about... Uh, equidistant from one another. Now, if I want to be really, really sure, okay, what I can do is I can make, for example, my um, button transparent. I like to do that. And then I kind of zoom in and I can just adjust the view until I can see down into my button or I can swing around from the other side and I can make sure that these are spaced the way I want them to be. I want them to be about three millimeters from one another. So let's see, just looking. And this is one of those spots where you can use a ruler, but I'm looking one, two, three boxes. So I look pretty good. I look like I'm three millimeters. All right, so home and zoom back in. Now, if I was just doing a two button um, design, I'd be done. All good. Oh, how did I manage to group? That is a whole, I don't know how that happened. That's different, but that's okay. Um, all right, so if I was just doing a two button design, I would be basically finished with my very simple button, but I want four. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to select each of them. So I just held down the shift key and clicked on each. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do copy and paste. And when you do copy and paste, you notice that shifted them. So they're not right on top of each other like the duplicate was. So again, I'm going to go ahead and just move them. I'm going to use my um, view shift here and just see, am I the distance apart I want? No, I'm much too close to this other set of buttons for what I, I am hoping to achieve. And again, this is personal preference. Your project may be different. And all I've done now is pull them apart. Okay, great. Home, zoom back in. All right, so now I have four buttons, but they're nowhere near where I want them to be. So again, shift, I'm selecting each of my buttons and I am grouping them. Oh, I missed one and group. So now they're all acting as one piece and I can select all of them again and use that align to get them centered. Hey, come on. To center them. See, it's already centered in the middle and that, I know it doesn't look centered, but we're gonna take a look in a second. Okay. So if I look, now I can see my buttons are centered in the center of my, or my holes are cent centered in the center of my button. That looks pretty good. Now, these cylinders are really, really tall right here. It doesn't really matter. We could make them shorter, but when we go ahead and select everything and group all of these pieces now, look what happens. There we go. It cut the holes exactly where I wanted them in my button. Pretty easy. Now I've got a basic button that I can use. And if I go to export, I'm going to 
download my file. Now, which file you use may depend on your 3D printer. Typically, um, for my library and for my use, I download an STL file. Okay, and it's just going to go ahead and you can see down here, it's going to download in onto your um, computer in your download directory, and you can find it there. Okay, you may be wondering, but what about the color of my button? The truth is, whatever color you have here in Tinkercad doesn't really matter. Um, that's all going to be decided when you actually go and add filament to the uh, 3D printer. So don't worry too much about it. It's totally just preference. You may choose different colors just to keep different pieces separate, but don't worry too much about that. Now, perhaps you're thinking, but I want a button that has like that kind of rounded edge that you usually see. How do I add that? Well, we're going to go over here into our shapes. And if you notice, there's this torus, okay, which is kind of a rounded shape. Now, what I want to do is show you how you can, oh, where do we go? And that's, see how I just used that function so it zoomed in on the piece that I'm, I'm working with presently. Okay, so here's my torus. It's basically a, a ring. It looks like a donut, right? Um, I can change a couple things about it. So I can change the radius of that torus. Um, and I can change the tube sides. Okay, so I can change a lot about um, this piece. The steps basically adjust... Um, how much of a curve it has, so you can kind of see, and, uh, or I'm sorry, sides, and then steps is going to affect how rounded it is. So I want something pretty rounded, um, and I want it to be, we're going to start with making it about the same size, here's my measurements, about the same size as my button itself, so I'm going to Put that to, I'm going to get this out of my way. Um, put this to 25 millimeters. So again, about one inch. Now this is going to be a little tricky because this piece is not going to just, you know, mesh with a other piece necessarily. Let's see. Zoom. Okay. I can drag it over. You see how that works? And at this point, I could select them all group them, and I've got my rounded edge to my button, okay? And you can see if I move this, it's got a flat bottom, okay, because the torus wasn't as thick or wasn't thicker than the uh, rest of the button, so it didn't come out the bottom. It just merged into the, the rest of the button, uh, which is usually how buttons are made. You usually want a flat bottom. Um, and I've got my little edge. Now, if you feel like that that rounded corner or edge is um, not quite what you wanted, you can come in here uh, to the features and you can adjust the radius. Okay, again, you may end up with something that doesn't fit your button. <laughs> um, I'm gonna undo that. Uh, and you can adjust the tube size, okay? You may want to, if you want it a little bit smaller, you're going to adjust your tube size um, to make it smaller. Now, that does affect other qualities, like look at how thin this is now. So I may need to just, you know, make this two millimeters. Okay. And then I'm going to lift it just a little bit off the work plane. And now... I'm going to use my, actually, I'm going to go ahead and use my align feature here to bring them together. And now I can see, do I like that? Nope, it's too small. Now I got to adjust. So you can, you can get really into this and really play with how you, um, how you make that curve until it's just the way that you like it. And that's what's really powerful about 3D printing in general is that you have control over how your object is going to look and to function when this is all over. So there we go. I just kind of taking a look. Do I like how that's lined up? Yeah, I like that. I'm going to go ahead 
group it all together again. And you can see it all merged it together. And there's my button. I like that a little bit better. I didn't like that wide band. So, ta-da, that is our very simple button. Now, as I said before, kind of the power of using 3D printing is that you can make this project pretty much anything you can imagine. For example, it does not have to have a round button here, right? What if instead I said, I want a heart button, okay? What if I want a heart button instead of a round button? Here's my heart. I'm actually going to go ahead and change the color. Aw, oh, happy heart. Maybe I like this red better. Nope. See? Doesn't matter. You can change it really easily. I want this button to be about the same size. So I'm going to go 25 millimeters. Oops, typed wrong. Wide. Okay. Now, if I look at it from the side, whoa, that is a very thick button. We're going to bring that down to two millimeters just like before. All right. And now I just need my holes, but oh, I got to do all those, those cylinders again. No, I don't have to do all those cylinders again. What I'm going to do is come over here. I'm going to ungroup and ungroup again. Now you see, I've got my four cylinders that I had grouped previously and I'm going to duplicate them. And I'm going to drag a set over here to my heart. Then I'm going to come over here and go ahead and just group that all up again. So I've got a button. Oh, it changed color. It happens. Um, now I've got my my uh, holes and I can just select them all again and use our align tool just as we did before to make sure that they're centered on my heart. I'm also going to do a quick check to make sure. Oh, see, this is why on the bottom, for whatever reason, when I drag them over, they're not cutting all the way down to the bottom here. Um, and that can just be sometimes when it duplicates, it shifts. So we are going to come on now. We're going to use that cone and we're just going to lower them into that heart a little bit more. We want to make sure that we can see that they're cutting through on the bottom of the heart. You see how they're actually below the heart now? That's actually what we want to make sure we get good holes. Okay. And let's see what I'm doing here. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of the items again, hit group and boom, there we go. I've got four holes in a heart. I can use any of the given shapes, like say I want to do a star button instead. Um, I want a diamond button, whatever I like. I can also come into scribble mode and that lets me draw any kind of crazy funky shape I want. Okay, and maybe I want to fill that all in. And you see how I can make any kind of crazy button shape I can imagine. Now, some folks are better at this than I am. I'm not very steady with the mouse. I'm not a great artist. But it gives you the basic idea that you can create your own shape. So there you go. You can see it's right there. And I'm going to um, say done. If I wanted to take something off, like say I don't like this bit over here. I just come in with the erase function. I don't know what this is. This is like an amoeba button, I guess. Um, <laughs> amoeba button time. But I can I can totally, you know, change that up. Um, I can even tell it, no, I don't like, you know. I, oh, that's right. I forgot. You can actually come in with a, a specific shape and erase with it too. Um, and draw with different shapes. But for today, you get the idea. There's a squiggle button. Again, I just change it to my two millimeters. I would add my holes just as I did before. Um, ungroup, uh, copy, paste. Oh, I was had everything selected. So if I just want those, copy, paste, drag my holes over. <laughs> this is now this is the problem sometimes when you use um, your own custom shapes. It can be harder to um, to add the holes <laughs> but that's okay you can kind of figure it out and there you go Did that work are we are we grouping for me oh it's taking a minute just processing so you can create any shape that you want if you want to you can also import and you can import all kinds of different files um svg files are pretty easy to find online so if there's a specific shape you want like a i don't know a duck um if you can find a 
silhouetted black and white clip art of a duck. You don't want anything fancy. You want something that's just basically the outline of the duck. You can import that. Um, you can import that shape and cut that shape and make that your, your um, button instead. So there you go. Three different little buttons, all of them very, very different. Um, but that is how you use basic function in Tinkercad to make a simple item. This also works if you want to make backpack tags or things like that. So I hope that you give this a shot. Uh, if you have any questions, you can find me on Facebook at Kaleidoscope Science. You can find me uh, on Instagram at Kaleidoscope Sci. You can find me on Twitter at Kaleidoscope Sci, or you can send me an email at sandy at enrichscience.com. Um, or you can, of course, just leave a question right here in the YouTube comments, and I will do my best to answer. Have fun, enjoy uh, 3D printing, and learn something new. Take care.